Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Derek Reeves, procurement training specialist for CPOGS. Thank you all for tuning in. We're going to go ahead and get started and uh, welcome to our fabulous training Tuesday. Um, first, we will have a couple announcements. Uh, let's go ahead and go over. First, we'll have a couple of announcements. Uh, today, we'll have some guest speakers, including myself, Senior State Purchasing Officer Cassandra Wilkin, and Acting State Purchasing Officer Josh Surgent. Uh, we will be providing up training on uh, joint purchasing methods and governmental joint purchasing at 30 ILCS 525. And then we'll have our quote for the day. All right. Uh, just a reminder, so this Thursday, May 18th at 9 a.m., we will have our second monthly bid by practice session. Um, these sessions, this will allow, you know, users to walk through examples with trainer assistance, share screens, etc. So um, these sessions will be more informal, collaborative, and it allows for, you know, more specific questions once you've attended the monthly training. However, this does not replace the Q&A that happens in our monthly training, just only providing some additional opportunities to practice and ask questions, okay? Um, also, just a very important reminder, um, our, uh, our Training Tuesday, our link for our Training Tuesday will be published on our website. Um, and included with, you know, included with this email. So just to just to hammer this home next week, this link that we currently use will not work and we will be publishing and sending out a new one just to just to remind everyone. So, um, and then our last announcement is our informal informational slide. So we like to provide this slide throughout our, you know, throughout our training Tuesdays. Just to let you know, let everyone know that they can where they can find and have direct access to upcoming bid by training and other procurement opportunities. Okay, so we always like to include that slide in there as well. So, um, without further ado, um, I will in further wait, I'll pass the ball over to Cassandra to begin our training and share some wonderful information that, uh, that has been put together for everyone. All right, Cassandra, if you'd like to take it away. Morning, Mrs. Kim. Hello. Good morning, Mrs. Kim. Hello. Good morning. Thank you, Derek. And I would like to thank you all for being here today. Um, there is a lot of information to cover, so we have split the training up over two sessions. Today we'll cover part one, and next week we'll cover part two. Uh, we will ask that if you have any questions during today's training that you please hold them until the end of the presentation and we'll do our best to answer them at that time. Um, with that said, let's go ahead and get started. I have not received anything from our property officer. Um, as I had said before, that's- uh, If anyone, to if mention. everyone could put themselves on yeah. mute so we can get started, I would appreciate that. Provided me anything. So once we- All right. Uh, the Unified Procurement Program, which we refer to as UP, is the Chief Procurement Officer for General Services Joint and Cooperative Purchasing Program. Central Management Services previously managed this program before the General Assembly transferred the authority of the Governmental Joint Purchasing Act to the Chief Procurement Officer. Uh, Governmental Joint Purchasing Act is a mouthful, so throughout the presentation, I'm just going to either say Joint Purchasing Act or JPA. The Joint Purchasing Act and the Joint Purchases allowed under the JPA are different from procurements pursuant to the code. There's a completely different statute which uh, includes different methods and different processes. Over the next couple of trainings, we hope to share some of the differences uh, between these purchasing methods under the Joint Purchasing Act and some key patterns that'll help you decide when a joint purchase is the pathway to choose versus a code purchase. Sorry. Um, when uh, an agency is considering any joint purchase method, they should contact their SPO early. What we would like to see is the agency contact the SPO before the method has been decided and definitely before any contacts uh, with any vendors. There will, this will help ensure that the correct procurement method is utilized and we are following all the proper guidelines such as utilizing the proper forms, brand name justification, and BEP utilization, just to name a few. UP's goal is to bring savings to the state and local units of government through uh, master contracts and cooperative contracts that comply with the Joint Purchasing Act. 
Uh, sometimes using cooperative contracts, we're able to leverage the purchasing power of multiple organizations to get the best possible price. When we think of cooperatives, now we're talking about national uh, procurements versus just a single state procurement. The volume of the contracts are much larger and therefore could potentially lead to better pricing. Us objectives are to increase the cooperative participation opportunities and utilization of participation uh, contracts, um, to assist agency with piggyback purchase requests, um, find and create efficiencies, and also to standardize joint and cooperative contract processes. Um, if you have any questions in the future, please contact your SPO for further assistance. The UP team is always available to help the SPO and uh, the agency navigate any UP-related questions or concerns. So this diagram illustrates the different purchasing methods, who leads them, and ultimately who can utilize the resulting contract. Uh, we will explain each of these methods as we continue through these slides over the next couple of uh, trainings. During the training today, we will discuss the agency-led joint purchase master contracts uh, joint purchase contracts, and even though release off multiple award master uh, is under the cooperative led, um, we will discuss that today also just to try and spread the two trainings out evenly. Uh, next week, we will review cooperative led contracts and some frequently asked questions. Derek, do you want to go ahead and get us started with joint purchase master contracts? It'd be my pleasure, and thank you again, Cassandra, for all the information. Um, the, so a joint purchase master contract is, is a contract that aggregates um, the need between two or more governmental entities. So these contracts can be, you know, uh, definite or indefinite quantity contracts. There are two categories of joint master contracts, um, statewide JPMCs and multi-agency JPMCs. So that third bullet point um, is defining the factor between statewide JPMCs and multi-agency JPMCs. So when thinking about um, a statewide JPMC, know that like all government units and qualified not-for-profits can use it. So it's open to everybody. Multi-agency uh, multi JPMCs are uh, limited. Only certain uh, governmental units and or qualified not-for-profits are permitted to use the contract. Each resulting contract also specifies their permitted users. So currently only do it, CPOGS, CMS, and ISBE are permitted to execute JPMCs without obtaining special delegation. So if your agency would like to conduct a JPMC, please remember to seek the delegation prior to starting any procurement method. So, and as the lead of a joint purchase master contract, an agency is able to conduct RFP, IFB, IFB solicitations, sole sources, emergencies, and even small purchases, and make them available to all governmental units and qualified not-for-profit agencies. Uh, pursuant to the JPA, all joint purchase master contracts are conducted in the same manner as code purchases. The difference is both the solicitation and the resulting contract requires additional language. So if a, com if a competitive solicitation is not being sought, and the agency is using a sole source or emergency method of procurement, the agency must still indicate it will be a joint purchase master contract on the respective forms. Okay. So, so um, agencies are also required to include all authorized users on their notice of award and complete an authorization for joint purchasing to be signed by the CPO prior to execution of any JPMC contract. And the, under, the, the unsigned form should be attached at PO prior to execution. So please ensure you know, the proper contract language for, uh, for permitted users is included in the contract, that the joint purchasing authorization request matches the contract and that all information is accurate. The SPO will uh, send that, you know, the authorization for joint purchasing to the CPO for signature. The purchase order will not be approved until that CPO, until the CPO has authorized the JPMC by signing the authorization for joint purchasing. Once authorized, the SPO can approve the PO and will send the signed 
authorization for joint purchasing to the agency requesting it to be added to the purchase order with the executed contract. So, okay, just to mention, so agency led purchases are, are joint purchases led by one of the agencies under the general services portfolio. With agency led per purchases, an Illinois agency leads a procurement and another agency or agencies acts as the participant and together they jointly procure a good or service. So this means if two or more agencies have a need and work with the same vendor to obtain that need or obtain a better price by aggregating the need, it is a joint purchase. So in one, per one perfect example I could think of is uh, the Department of Corrections and Department of Juvenile Justice both had a need for a parole tracking system. Instead of posting two separate procurements, the lead agency was able to post one procurement for both departments. And this aggregates the need and oftentimes can lead to better pricing when thinking of economies of scale. So, um, and when an agency is completing a joint purchase, they are required to complete and include an intent to, per to, to participate form prior to posting a solicitation. So like JPMCs, an agency is able to conduct RFP and IFB solicitations, sole sources, emergencies, and even small purchases. Pursuant to the JPA, all joint purchases contracts are conducted in the same manner as co-purchases. Both the solicitation and the resulting contract requires additional language for these purchases as well. For sole source and emergencies, the agency must still indicate which agencies will be participating in the resulting contract on their forms. Okay, um, the lead agency is required to post the notice of award and the notice should include all authorized users. The lead agency also completes the authorization for joint purchasing to be signed by the CPO prior to execution of any joint purchase contract. The unsigned authorization for joint purchasing should be attached at purchase order prior to execution. So please ensure that you know the authorization for joint purchasing contains the permitted users indicated on the intent to participate. The SPO will send the authorization for joint purchasing to the CPO for signature. The purchase order again will not be approved until the CPO has authorized the joint purchase by signing the authorization. And then once authorized, the SPO can approve the purchase order and send the signed authorization for joint purchasing to the agency, requesting it to be added to the purchase order with the executed contract. Now the participating agency will use the approved notice of award and CPO approved authorization for joint purchasing provided by the lead agency to complete their purchase order. So most often, um, each agency would complete their own contract and purchase order, including only their portion of the need. But there have been times that the lead agency completes a contract for both agencies, and that's okay as well. If the lead agency is completing the contract for all participating agencies, the SPO for the lead agency would have to ensure the contract has all permitted users in the contract and that the purchase order is set up for release with only the permitted users. So um, at, this, at this moment though, I would like to pass the torch and Josh, would you like to share uh, some information about our release of multiple award contracts? Sure thing, thanks Derek. Uh, so as many of you know, uh, here in general services, we are mostly familiar with primary, secondary, tertiary and geographical contracts. But what we're less used to is what's seen in cooperative purchasing. Multiple award master contracts are not like other joint purchasing master contracts with only one vendor. Uh, with cooperative purchasing, the cooperatives award a contract to multiple vendors for the same or substantially similar services. Because multiple vendors have a contract that may meet an agency's need, there's a secondary process that we use to determine the lowest cost among those vendors. If that release off multiple award master contract process is not followed, we could have an order that is voidable. Currently, the CPO's office only has one multiple award master contract available. 
That is the Nashville Value Point Cloud Solutions contract. Uh, I know a lot of you are probably already familiar with that. Uh, and as an example, there were 61 contracts awarded by NASPO, but only uh, six of those contracts are available through CPOGS. So when an agency decides to use the requ request to release off multiple award master contract, and that's a mouthful, so you'll probably hear me abbreviate ROMAC, um, they should involve the SPO early in the process. This is because an SPO determination that comes later could hinder the process for, if, for example, brand name specifications were, in, were inappropriately used or if any part of the ROMAC process was mishandled. Again, involving the SPO should be made before any contact with any vendor is made. There's currently a process manual that we have available for the release off multiple award master contracts that covers what we're reviewing today. There is a link to this manual attached to the word process here. The agency should be utilizing the multiple award master contract RFQ template for their specifications. These specifications ideally should be reviewed and approved by your SPO before the agency moves to the next step. Some of the common issues we see with these ROMAC specifications are being unclear on what the agency is actually seeking, uh, inconsistent units of measure, and quite often there's not a term mentioned, uh, especially with software. Are we purchasing a year or two years? You know, we need to, to have that hammered out as, as clearly as possible. Once the specifications have been developed and approved by the SPO, the agency would then email this request, request for quote to all the vendors that may meet the need. Our suggestion for all requests to release on multiple award master contracts is to resent, send the RFQ to all six vendors to ensure we're not meeting anyone who could possibly meet the need. The primary contact information that you should use for each of those vendors is in each of the CPOGS master contracts. The information can also be found on the NASPO website under each vendor's contract. Based on the complexity of the agency's, you should allow adequate time for the vendors to respond. As a rule of thumb, they should never go out for fewer than, than three days. The agency will receive and review the quotes to ensure that the vendor is actually meeting the agency's need. They will then prepare the request to release a multiple award master contract form. Once the SPO ensures that that process was followed correctly and approves the request, the agency can then hop into the bid buy process. Here are a few important things to remember that, that we've seen when, when looking through these. When agencies are developing the RFQ specs, the content should be from publicly available information and sources. I always said this a couple of times, but again, an agency should not communicate with any vendors before or during the development of these specifications. Agencies should seek assistance from their SPO if they need help developing the specifications before the RFQ goes out. And if an agency wants to utilize proof of concept or demonstration, this should be included in the RFQ as part of the evaluation process so that once the low cost vendor has been determined, the agency can then proceed with the proof of concept with that low cost vendor. Proof of concept should not be done prior to completing the ROMAC process. That would be uh, interacting with the vendor, you know, prior to the process. Failure to follow the ROMAC process and guidelines could result in vendors being determined to be prohibited from selection, the disapproval of the ROMAC request, or again, having an order that is voided. Like small purchases, these are more informal and we're allowed some cures. However, we wouldn't want the vendor to alter our specifications in any way. For example, changing the length of term or offering a different quantity than what we were seeking, these would not be allowable. Some examples of curable items are math errors, um, the vendor providing a quote but not using our form um, or our template, and, or we could need to seek some other uh, clarifications with those. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and hand it back to Cassandra to bring us home for today's training. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, before we open it up for questions, um, we, uh, on what we've discussed today, we would like to do a brief summary. Um, so there are two agency-led joint purchasing methods. You have the joint purchase master contracts and joint purchases. Uh, for both um, methods, agencies are allowed to pretty much choose any method of procurement. Um, and we need to state the permitted users on the onset of the procurement. Uh, these, uh, there are some minor differences though. Any agency can process a joint purchase with another agency. However, special, special delegation 
may be required for joint purchase master contracts. Uh, joint purchase master contracts are procured um, by only one agency, while joint purchase contracts are led by one agency with one or more participating agencies. Um, for release off multiple word master contracts, remember to use all of the proper forms found on the up webpage. Allow a minimum of three days for vendors to respond, but if uh, the specifications are more complex, make sure you give them longer. Um, only use information that is publicly available when developing your specifications, and please remember you cannot engage with vendors in a proof of concept or um, any type of communication until the ROMAC process has been followed and the lowest cost vendor has been identified. Um, only then can we begin conversations with the vendors. So even though there's contracts in place, we still have to get to that low cost vendor. On this part of the slide deck, because we will send this out, um, it has the different links to our web pages, um, job aids, joint purchasing act, cooperatives, all that throughout the slide um, where you see that red, there are links. So hopefully that'll be quick access for you. With that said, uh, wanna see if there are any questions today. I believe I saw one that's uh, from Ms. Robinson says to give an example of vendor slash contract. Is it like Pitney Bowes? Give an example of what? I'm sorry. Of uh, vendor slash contracts. Is it like Pitney Bowes? Can you clarify a little bit what you're asking? I want to make sure I answer that correctly. I don't see it in there, but um, oh, she said she has her answer. Okay. Okay. Any questions? Any other questions on joint purchases, Romax? Next week we will be getting into cooperatives and piggybacks, but I want to make sure there's a good understanding of this and make sure all questions are answered. If you think of any between now and then, um, you can shoot us an email uh, and we'll be happy to address those next week. Derek, I'll stop sharing and give it back to you. Sorry, I was on mute. Thank you so much, Cassandra. And thank you again, Josh, for your time and sharing such wonderful information and knowledge. Thank you guys very much. Um, and now for our, we will go ahead and do our quote for the day. Um, our quote for the day is from Henry Ford. Uh, Teamwork coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is progress. Working together is success. Teamwork being heavily emphasized. When we work together, success is limitless. You all are amazing. Uh, thank you for your time and tuning in today. Please remember we are here to help. And if you have any questions or comments, we always put our email in there. So thank you all very much for all your time.